Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Problem Solving uh, 101 with National Flooring Equipment. My name is Jake Sina, I'm Vice President of Global Sales with National, and I'm happy to be uh, in front of all of you today. So thank you for taking the time. Uh, the purpose of uh, the next couple days is to really share information as a group. We have a tremendous opportunity over the next two days to learn from one another, uh, talk about some surface prep problems and some potential solutions. So there's a lot going on in the world right now. Let's, let's not lie. But the next two days, let's concentrate and let's have some fun. Please bring in your questions, type your questions. There'll be trivia questions thrown out for great fun and prizes. Um, today, our first session will be led uh, by Mr. Dave Bingham and Tom Griffin. So uh, our first session, we're going to talk about how to tear up hardwood flooring. So I'll turn it over to Dave Bingham, our Director of Global Training. Take it away, Dave. Thank you, Jake. Good morning. My name is Dave Bingham. I'm the Global Director of Training, which is a super fancy title for the guy that gets dirty every day. And I'm pretty sure that behind the scenes, uh, marketing puts Jake on before me so you guys can see he's tall, handsome, intelligent, good looking, and then they put me on. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> uh, once again, don't forget, um, type in your questions as we go through. Uh, our first topic today is how do you remove hardwood flooring? And there's a little bit of splinter. We're gonna add some information to that. But joining uh, me is uh, Tom Griffin. Tom, you wanna step up here and introduce yourself? Good morning. Uh, sorry, we were just switching mics real quick. Tom Griffin, I uh, cover South Central US. So if uh, you're down in Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Colorado, New Mexico, I'm your sales rep. Uh, this guy has taught me everything that I know about surface prep and I'm really excited to be here learning today along with you guys and I'm looking forward to questions and being able to show off what our equipment can do. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I wanna remind you guys that uh, I've been doing this for 25 years and the only reason why I know anything is I've spent all of my time on job sites with you guys and I've watched and learned from all the different job sites and the different contractors, how they utilize the tools in different ways and I've gathered all that information. Um, I didn't know it, I learned it from you guys. So I'm networking and sharing all that information and giving it back to somebody that might not have been on a job site that I've been on. That's what's so exciting about what I do. Um, and also let me point out, Marketing told me that uh, the camera adds 10 pounds, so evidently I ate five cameras this morning, so. <laughs> All right, um, let's start talking about how do you remove hardwood flooring? This is a really tough application that a lot of guys struggle with. Um, the first thing that a lot of guys know they should do is, is score the floor. Um, historically, you walk onto a job site, they're doing a big gym, there's a guy that's got a saw like this, filling the room full of dust and it's super slow. He's on his hands and knees. This is not the way to do it today. This might've been a great way to tackle this 10 years ago, but I do not think it's the way to do it anymore. There's no dust collection and it's slow and it's ineffective. So National actually sells this tool. Tom, you wanna tell us a little bit about this? Yeah, so this is our 110-8. It is a 110 volt scarifier. And what's really great about this machine is there's actually a blade set. Ah, Dave's got one right there, look at that. So with this machine, you can do the typical scarifier things. You can remove some line striping. Um, you could you know, leave a shop last like appearance on the floor. Or uh, with that blade, you can actually cross cut your hardwood floors without having to be on your hands and knees with a circular saw. And as you can see coming off the back here, there is dust collection, which we all know being out in the industry right now, especially with OSHA and being on job sites, everybody wants clean, clean, clean. So what you guys will find with this tool right off the bat is not only does scoring, scoring the hardwood increase your production and make things go faster, this isn't a very expensive tool. It's, it's really well priced and it's 110 volts, so you can use it anywhere. But not only can I use it to score the wood floor, but once we use a scraper to pull the bulk material off, I can actually change the drum and we can put on a drum similar to this with TSR style teeth and with the same tool, I can use this drum to remove some of the glue or all of the glue. Tom mentioned the shop blast like profile. That's what this drum will do. Two bolts, take the side plate off, slide this right on, put your two bolts back on, go right back to work. So already we're seeing a bunch of versatility off of this very inexpensive tool. 
So, and this drum is currently set up with three blades. You can set it up with one blade or just two blades, or you can run it with all three blades. Um, we're going to turn on the vacuum, and we're going to turn on the saw, and I'm going to cut a short uh, demo just so you guys can see how this works. I think the, the breaker's off. I got gotcha. you. Let us get powered up real quick. There she goes. Turn on some motors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire it up, and I'm going to lower the head down into the wood, and then I'm going to let it pull me forward real slow so you guys can see how it scores the wood. I'm going to fire it up. I'm going to drop it into the surface. Right away, you guys can see if I was doing this with this saw on my hands and knees, there's just no way you're going to keep up with the production. So this is, this is step one of how to remove wood flooring. You guys are aware that the wood floor is tongue and groove. It's all pushed together. So even with the biggest rider, if you're trying to take up the entire floor, it almost becomes a monolithic floor at that point. So scoring it helps it break up and wood pile in front of you. And it also makes cleanup a lot faster as well. So Step one, um, score your hardwood flooring. When, uh, Dave, would you recommend uh, cross-cutting closer together? And when would you recommend cross-cutting further apart? Great question, Tom. So right now it's got three blades. So if we we're going to use a walk-behind national scraper with the wood floor blade, I'd want to cut them closer together because this is a tough removal. For the larger riders, like we're going to use an 8,000, I, you can actually just put one or two blades and you can cut the lumber about four to six feet apart. So you don't have to score quite as much as we've done, but we're in a pretty small area and we're just trying to show you what it can do. So the bigger the machine, the farther apart your scoring sections can be. Um, we talked a little bit about the different drums you want to pan over this way or you want me to come over this way? Is, can you see me? All right, great. We're going to talk about the 6280 um, Gladiator. This is our HD. This, this national walk behind is actually designed for taking up soft and hard goods, but it especially excels in the removal of hard goods. Um, part of what makes this machine work really well is um, for hardwoods I can take my side slide weights and push them all the way forward which puts more head on more head pressure more weight on the front of it and when you buy the machine you actually get two attachments a hard goods and a soft goods they do come labeled so that you can actually know which one is for which the hard goods has the correct angle to hold a shank to make that, whether it's a hardwood removal shank or a carbide tip shank, um, it holds that shank at the right angle for removing a hard good. The soft good, vice versa, it's a different angle. So it actually sets the machine up with the blade to be at the right angle for removing VCT or commercial carpet. Um, it really makes this particular machine extraordinarily versatile. I'm going to actually take the transport wheels off this, and I'm going to show you guys the difference between how the hardwood shank and then how um, the soft goods would be set up. So I'm going to tilt this back. So while Dave's doing that, uh, oftentimes they get a lot of questions out on the road. Your commander and your gladiator look virtually the same. Why is it that the commander can't remove hard goods um, and why is the Gladiator slower than the Commander at removing soft goods? And the machines truly were designed differently. A lot of the differences are internal, you can't see them. A thicker axle, additional isolators. Um, it's just built, the Gladiator is built to take more of a beating when it comes to those hard goods. And the Commander was built to be fast for removing just those, you know, soft goods, the carpets, the VCTs out there.
So if you guys can see, I've got the hardwood um, shank on the front of it. You can see that shank is riding pretty much flat on the floor. So I'm gonna slide under the wood floor and it's gonna pick it up quite efficiently. Let's say that we're done with the hardwood flooring portion of this and we wanna re-scrape some glue or if we wanna use the machine for VCT or some other application, I'm gonna show you guys um, how easy it is to change from the hard good angle attachment holder to the soft good. I'm gonna tip it back. You have five 9 16 bolts right here. I pre-loosened them to make this look easy. Shh, don't tell. This just slides right out, hopefully. I thought you had just gone to the gym this morning and really <laughs> out. Oh, you guys see the slots? It just slides right out. So we're gonna set that one aside. This one is labeled soft goods. I'm gonna slide it right in. Tighten these 9 16 up. This is really simple. I have a lot of guys ask, do you have to take the weights off? Absolutely not. All you have to do is get your wrench in here, tighten these up. Pretty simple. I'm going to put my soft goods on, and then this is the holder for it that goes right there. You guys see the angle difference right there. This is for re-scraping glue and um, soft goods. That's the biggest difference. And when you buy the machine, both of these come with it. Your hard good angle attachment, your nine degree and your 30 degree. So you get both of them. Another great feature on the Gladiator here is that the shanks and the blades um, swivel. It's built in swivel head, just like it is on our riders. Um, there is a swivel head attachment available for our smaller walk behinds and for the commander. Um, but this already allows you to stay in the work because that blade or shank is going to swivel and stay flat with the concrete. So the next question that I'd like to go over that directly relates to how do you remove hardwood flooring? We're going to talk about why does National have so many shanks? That's a great question. We're not going to go over all the shanks but we are gonna talk about the hardwood shanks and some of the differences and why, why they are different. And I find that uh, this is a little known and little understood portion of National Flooring Equipment shanks. We make two major kind of shanks. Uh, they come in different sizes and lengths, but th this is the two that are show the best. You have a long, narrow shank and a short, wide shank. So they do the same thing, right? kind of, but they're four different applications. The short shanks are designed for narrow wood floor. The reason why is once it starts and gets underneath the wood, you want it to start lifting it up before it gets in too far. So if I use the same shank on a really wide, like engineered wood floor, I'm not even really underneath it yet and it's starting to lift it, which tends to tear it up and doesn't lift as well, and it makes a big mess, and it slows down cleanup. So the short wood shanks are for narrow wood floor, just like this. For the wider wood floor like this, this is pretty popular. I don't even think this is wood floor. Maybe it is, but it's just for visual. I want to use this long shank because you guys can see I'm almost all the way underneath it before it starts lifting it. That's the goal. So to get it to lift up in a single sheet and to speed up your process, you want to use a long shank for wider um, wood floor, engineered wood floors, and a shorter shank for more narrow wood floors. It doesn't have anything to do with the thickness of the material. It has to do with the width of it. Anybody have any questions about that? You guys can type in live chat. And I hope that clears up a little bit about why we have different shanks and how to utilize them for each application. Well, and I think when it really comes down to it, would one type of wood shank remove hardwood that's thicker or thinner? Yes. The reason we offer both is because your time is valuable, your time is money. So pairing the correct tool, yep, now you've got two shanks that you have to have in your van, but at the end of the day, if you're able to get through a job faster and easier, 
you can get on to that next job and be ready to go. That's why we have all of this different tooling. Cool. Thanks, Tom. If anybody's got any shank questions, type them in. And this is actually a hybrid training. I don't know if you guys can see it, but we have some people here live, not a whole lot due to the conditions in the world today. But if anybody from the live audience has questions, you're welcome to ask. And um, Connie says, our marketing, that's the real brains here. If, you, if you're live in audience here, if you ask me a question, I can't answer it, she'll buy you lunch. So... <laughs> <laughs> All right, our next topic, um, and it's a real popular question, is how do I decrease my charging time on my battery-powered national flooring equipment riders? I have found that the competition claims that our charge time is slow, that you can only charge it off 110 volt, and believe all that is not true and I think that it is time that we start um, teaching our contractors and our uh, potential buyers how you can decrease that charging time so our machines actually have a Delta Q charger mounted in the front that looks like this and in the back of it it has an IEC cord when it comes from National, thanks Tom, Yep. it is equipped with this 110 volt cable. It's great, that's super versatile. Everybody's gonna agree with me that you can find 110 volt everywhere you go. If you wanna increase your charge time, or decrease your charge time rather, by about 30%, all, I, all you have to do is unplug your 110 volt IEC from the back of the charger. I bought, you want, will you take that? I bought this offline, and I don't remember how much it was. It wasn't very expensive, probably less than uh, you would think. This is a 230-volt single-phase cable with an IEC end. All I have to do is plug this into the back of my charger, and you can put whatever plug you need to on here. That's obviously interchangeable. I'm sure that my experienced contractors out there know that there's no such thing as a standard 230 single-volt plug, but... Um, Put whichever one works the best for you plug right into a spider box on the job and now i'm charging my national battery powered machines with 230 volt single phase a lot faster than if i just optioned for my 110 volt so you it's great that you have the option for 110 but i think it's super important that everybody understands that this 230 volt option is just a plug in play basically that's it that's all there is to it, it doesn't take any reprogramming it's just unplug and plug in, unplug this one, plug this one in, and then when you're done, if you wanna go back to 110 volt, plug this one back into the back of the charger. So Dave, our machines last a really long time. Um, I know that I've come across some 10, 12, 15 year old riders out there. Are the original chargers on those machines able to do this or is this just the Delta Q just the features? Just the newer Delta Q chargers that look like that. And what Tom's yeah. saying is exactly true. I've also found, um, this isn't spend time talking about the contractor's um, power, but we wanna talk a little bit about how the market works. I have run into, look how expensive national uh, battery powered machines are compared to ours. Every time I've run into that, it is because that other manufacturer is putting in standard wet cell batteries. They're putting in car batteries. We use AGM glass mat batteries, which are expensive, but they charge faster and they last a lot longer. And the difference between wet cell and AGM is the wet cell batteries, when the operator starts in the morning with a full charge on his batteries, it slows down all day long. It just gets slower and slower and slower and slower. With the AGM technology that we use, either the 180 amp or 200 amp hour batteries, they run the same speed, your foot per minute is the same all day long. In the last 10%, as an operator, you know it's time to charge it because your machine goes So their machines aren't cheaper. If you ask for a competitive quote with AGM batteries, you'll find out most of the time their riders are more expensive than ours. 
So don't get sucked into, they're too expensive. Uh, they're, make sure you're comparing apples to apples and make sure that the technology is the newest and the best technology you can get out there, which is all national does. Um, AGM is, is, there's no liquid in them, so they don't leak. Um, you could actually run those batteries upside down. They're military technology. They put them upside down inside of the tanks. They're, they're great batteries and they don't hold a memory, so you don't have to run them all the way dead before you can charge them. You can, you can use half the batteries and plug it in and you only use a half of a charge. So I know right now a lot of guys out there are using propane machines on jobs. I get a lot of questions about um, switching from propane over to a battery powered electric machine. Some best practices to make sure that you get the longest life out of the batteries that you can, because they're not inexpensive batteries. Um, I know one of the things you told me was, you guys are out on a job site, it's the end of the day, it's in your trailer, you're tired. Make sure that you plug that machine in to charge, even if you're not gonna run it out on a job the very next day. Because if you're storing that machine, those batteries in a very cold environment, like we have here in Colorado, or a very hot environment like you might have in Arizona or Texas, um, if you store those batteries with no charge in them, you can actually decrease the lifespan of the battery over time. So it's really important, charge your machine up before you put it in storage, even if you're not gonna use it for a while. So that way, when you come back to it, you're going to keep that battery life as high as you possibly can. Tom, that's a great point. Um, there's very little that, um, there's very few factors that actually can affect the life of your AGM glass batteries. And Tom pointed out the most important one is below freezing conditions, if the batteries are empty or dead or close to dead and you leave them outside for extended period of time, it can damage the batteries. If it's plugged in and charging, during the charging process, it actually creates heat, so it protects the batteries. And if the batteries are full, that also protects them from the cold. But leaving it empty in the trailer overnight in Canada, Minnesota, you know, these real cold environments, you, you want to make sure that you don't do that. That's a great point, Tom. Um, I even have guys that uh, ask, can I, it, the machine comes with a seven foot standard 12 gauge charging cord. The longer the cord, the, especially on 110 volt, the slower the charge time. I, you can use a 50 foot cord, your charge time is gonna increase. It'll take longer to charge your machine. So you wanna make sure that you're using the seven foot 12 gauge 110 volt cord as much as possible, but it will not hurt the batteries or the charger to use a 50 foot cord, but it will slow you down. And a lot of guys, I tell them, you can plug in your ride on machines and leave them plugged in because the battery charger, this Delta Q battery charger is gonna see that it's full and it's gonna shut off. And if it sits there for months and the batteries charge decharge just a little bit, it's gonna kick on and trickle charge it back to full. So it doesn't hurt to leave your machine plugged in. Because you never know when that next call is gonna come in. Right. And you've gotta be ready and have your machine ready to go. And especially if you're used to that instant on capability of propane and you're thinking of switching over to battery as a lot of guys are right now, um, making sure that that machine is ready to go for your next job um, at the spur of a moment is a great way to run your business. You wanna talk about, we're gonna step up to the next uh, little bullet point we've got going. Oh, we can. Do you want to tear it up now and then go back to tight spaces? Great. Yep. So now we're going to, we're, you guys, we're going to put, uh, we're going to fire up an 8,000, which is a propane powered, uh, massively awesome national. Uh, I, it's really a demolition model machine. Guys that are doing big, huge jobs, parking decks, bridges. Um, it's almost our biggest m machine. I, I don't know if you can see in the background, the Vikings are our largest machine, but for the general demolition uh, or general contractors that really just want to get it done. We're going to run this. It's pretty impressive. I like it. Um, I get super excited about running this. I've been out on a, a lot of jobs with this in the past and nothing performs as well as the national 8,000 as far as propane goes. Um, the battery powered version would be our 7,700, which is a big, heavy, fast um, 200 foot per minute um, 200 amp hour battery um, right on scraper. So I'm gonna move some stuff back just a little bit and then we're gonna kind of try to run this way so you guys can see it so you're not just seeing the back end of the machine. And Tom's gonna help me because he is awesome. And I'm gonna help Tom.
or not. All right, here we go. We're going to make some noise. So you guys, this is pretty typical. If this was an entire gym floor that was kind of monolithic, you'd have to peel up with a pry bar or some way to get, to get it started. So I've removed a couple of boards and I'm gonna start by kind of just getting up underneath it. And once I'm underneath it, I'm gonna slow down just a little bit and flatten out my shank just a little bit more. So I'm sliding underneath it to lift it up more efficiently. So I'm just gonna go real slow How's that look, Tom? Uh, might be a little high, but... So this is another great feature on the 8000 and the 7700 and some of our smaller models, being able to lower that plate down so you can actually adjust the angle and pitch of the blade on the fly um, without having to leave your seat. That's our dual lift technology. It's patented technology and really, the competitor's machines just go up and down like this. So on these tougher removals like wood floor and ceramic tile, which is gonna be another segment later today, they're hitting the side of that, so it's not very efficient. We're sliding right underneath it. Most of the time I get accused of cheating in my videos because it looks like it comes up so easy until you get it on your job site, turn it on and run it, and you see that just like the real world, this is the way to get it done. So I'm gonna turn up my RPMs a little bit, make a little more noise. that floor didn't stand a chance that's fun so you guys can see a little bit what I was talking about if you score it if we had scored the whole thing it comes up in a little bit smaller pieces a little bit easier to manage manage easier to get in the dumpster easy to get in your cart or your wheelbarrow um, you don't want big huge pieces of um, the wood floor to come up because it's harder to um, manhandle after the fact once it's up off the floor so you can speed things up and also it makes it a lot easier to remove. You guys, even with this machine, a couple times, you saw I was hitting it and it was, it was wanting to slow down. Um, does anybody in our audience want to come run this way or? <laughs> yeah. Well, that re-glued itself. Uh, yeah, we have some safety glasses. So do we have any questions out there from online? Anybody? This is a blast. Anybody want to know about the hardwood we put down? Here you go, Captain. Nope. Boop, boop. You can turn around and, and go safety that way. is really important, especially with these yeah, machines. Yeah, you can spin you it can around see, and go that way. Wood can fly, uh, materials go everywhere. So having safety glasses, ear protection, uh, especially if you're running a propane machine inside, you know, a CO2 badge or something like that, just to make sure that you're not overdoing it with the exhaust fumes.
the floor that he's going over right now has not been cross cut. So this machine is having to actually do all the work and really fight it. But you can see the power that's behind it, it's still going. Nicely done. Excellent work. Woo woo, you're hired. So there's a lot of, uh, oh Dave, you're just making it look easy. It, it's not, it's not, I'm not making it easy. The design and the engineering behind um, National Flooring Equipment's machine is what makes this easy. It, it's not about setting up something for the video. It's, it's really the technology that benefits you and your customers. Um, whether you're the end user or whether you're um, pitching a, why you should sell this machine um, to the end user, that's exactly why. We're sliding underneath and lifting it up. Why would you want to hit the side of some heavy material and try to, it turns your scraper into a battering ram. It's hard on the operator. Wham, wham. It's, it's hard on your machine. It creates a lot of maintenance. This, we're just sliding and lifting it up as we go. It's easier on the operator. It's faster. It's more efficient. Cleanup's easy. I've seen so many jobs where other machines, they just splinter the wood. And it makes a gigantic mess. All I have to do is come along, pick this up, put it on my cart. I've got a little plastic wheelbarrow cart. Put it in there, roll it out to the dumpster. It's fantastic. And then obviously we're gonna, you can re-scrape the glue as your next step. Um, let's talk a little bit about... Um, cleanup of some of your tooling. Uh, the next step in how do you remove wood flooring would be re-scraping of the glue or how do I take the glue up? Super popular question. What's the most efficient way? There's a couple of different ways. Right off the bat, um, we're going to change and put a holder on later when the wood floor is out of the way. We're going to put on a 0.094 spring steel blade and we're going to put it at a pretty big angle so we can um, re-scrape the glue. Uh, you can use a 0.188 too if there's little pieces of wood floor still stuck that's a much thicker blade. Um, also we can use which is one of my favorites is a one inch blade and not to be confused in the catalog with a razor that. blade. With a razor blade. A razor blade you could bend. The one inch blades actually are 0.094 and why 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 would you use a one inch blade dave you get so much head pressure on that short blade it is amazing on epoxy re-scraping of glue um, there's a whole bunch of different things that i really like the one inch blade but do keep in mind if you're going to use a one inch blade you have to order a national rbh a uh, razor blade swivel head attachment the machines come with a standard for holding a standard blade and the difference is the slot for this blade on the swivel head attachments are much longer. And for the razor blade head attachment, they're much shorter. Um, I'll, let's show them that real quick. Okay. National's blades are also heat treated. So our blades really are gonna last a lot longer than some of the other ones out there on the market. So I would say, um, you know, spring steel, heat treated blade, is going to outlast any other blade. So you might pay a little bit more for this at the beginning of it, but the actual life of the blade is going to be a lot longer. You want to grab one of these? Yep. And We've colored these. They don't come colored. Just so you could see the difference on the camera a little bit, I'm going to let Tom hold. This would be the razor blade or one-inch swivel head attachment. You can see by the black, the groove that's milled into this is much lower. This is a standard, so the blade's gonna go much farther. So if I go to put a razor blade or a one inch blade in this, it's basically gonna disappear in the holder. That's why you need to make sure you have an RBH 
uh, a razor blade head, swivel head attachment, if you're going to choose to use a one inch blade or razor blades. Dave, why would I use razor blades? Great question. Razor blades come in a pack of 50 and they're great for really re-scraping the glue down to almost nothing. Um, they're consumable. They don't last a real long time, but that's why they come in a pack of 50. So you can just keep changing them out and it almost leaves almost no glue on the floor. So I'm going to go put these back on the shelf. Yeah. Can I see the difference? Mm -hmm. It's missing the tops, but... Yep. So the question, uh, just to repeat, is um, how would we score the floor deeper than we did with the Spartan 110? Um, if you could notice it, some of the chunks were coming up, looked like they hadn't been cut quite deep enough. So uh, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Um, on the Spartan 110, you can actually adjust the height of that blade. You just need to drop it down a little bit further. So when you're doing a wood floor, obviously you're gonna pull a piece up and uh, you're gonna know how thick that wood floor is. So you're gonna be able to adjust whatever you're using to do the cross cut, but on the Spartan 110, you can actually drop down that blade a little bit further just to make sure that you really are getting down through there. You don't wanna go further than the wood. You don't wanna cut into the concrete. So, uh, we probably could have cut a little bit deeper on some of these pieces because it like these cuts that we did earlier looks like we only went halfway through um i would say it's okay to leave just a little bit at the very bottom because you also don't want to cut that concrete another great way is uh if you have a grinder uh, a national grinder you can use one inch carbides i usually double mine it's a great way to scrape glue off the floor and we already talked about the 110 scare fire, you can put um, a drum with uh, TSR style teeth for removing the glue. We also say, the want. Helix scare fire kit. Uh, so our smallest grinder, the Helix, is actually really versatile. Because it's a passive planetary grinder, you can actually take those magnetic hubs off that usually hold the diamond tools and put on the scarifier heads. It comes with those TSR teeth. And there's three of these and a special rubber band that goes around the machine. But these will tear through that glue and do the removal. The same thing as putting a drum on the scarifier, but you're able to do it with the grinder. It makes that Helix grinder very versatile. We talked a little bit about these one inch carbides. This is an example of what happens to a lot of your tooling. Uh, the glue, when you take a break to go eat lunch or um, talk to your special person in your life, you'll find out that this turns to a very hard substance and now it stops working. Um, also, I don't know if you guys can see some of the glue built up on these TSRs. We did this on purpose. So you should have an extra set that you can change. So. My, the biggest question I get is, Dave, how do I get this off? Because this is rock hard, you guys. That is a great question. How do I clean glue off of my grinding or scraping tools? I'm going to show you guys how. I bought this at a local home improvement store. This is really pretty screen. This is your basic expanded metal screen. It all does the same thing. There you go, Tom. You want to hold that? Mm -hmm. I get two plastic buckets, just like this. If you guys can see, I put the screen on top of it. And the reason why is, you can just throw that to the side if you want. I bought this, it's called adhesive removal. We, we didn't back way back in the day, 15, 20 years ago, use gasoline. We didn't do that, I promise. So now we use adhesive removal. I'm gonna fill this bucket up with my tooling in it, with this adhesive removal, let it soak for a little while. And when I'm ready, I'm going to take my tooling and my adhesive removal bucket, pour it into this bucket. The screen's going to catch all of my tooling, and that way I can reuse my adhesive again because you're going to use it over and over and over on a job. Um, I bought this at a home improvement store. It also comes in gallons, but I didn't really need a gallon for show and tell. I just bought a little container. Adhesive removal to my live studio audience. Look under your chairs! Look under your chairs! Just kidding. There's nothing there. 
You get adhesive removal. You get, you get adhesive, adhesive removal. removal. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, thank you. Everybody gets adhesive removal. It's a great trick. Um, if you have any questions about that, um, chat in, or I'm sure you guys know that you can reach out and talk to anybody at National. We are literally chock full of experts. If you dial 763-315-5300, you dial our 800 number, you can email us. Whoever answers the phone, they know what they're talking about. Um, if you want to reach out to me personally or Tom and have a conversation, you're welcome to do that. I'm going to say something that you probably won't believe, but you can dial my phone, my cell phone number, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. I've been doing this my whole life. I can't, I'm not good at anything else. Listen, this is it for me. I'm, I, I'm stuck in, in this business. I don't know how to do anything else. And even if you try to get out, I'm sure all you guys know every time you get out, you think you're out, they suck you back in again. It just becomes part of you. Um, you just live and breathe surface preparation in one form or another. But you can call me anytime. Uh, I don't care if it's Christmas Eve, care if it's 4th of July. I understand better than anybody. As soon as everybody else goes home and the plant shuts down or the building's quiet for an extended period of time, you have to go to work. And that's when you need somebody to reach out to. You need a friend. Hey, my machine's not doing this. How do I make it do this? Why is it doing this? It was doing this. Now it's not doing this. Pick up the phone and call me. I, this is international, too. If you guys call me, it's 4 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to answer my phone. It's going to take me a minute. I'm going to be like, yeah, okay, hold on. Whoa, oh, my wife's sleeping. Shh. Let me sneak down to the garage with a cigarette and a Mountain Dew, but shh, my wife's sleeping. It'll take me a minute, but I'll answer my phone. It's never turned off. Obviously, there's some exceptions in the days when people actually got on airplanes. I can't talk on my phone while I'm on an airplane, but I haven't been on an airplane in a while, and I don't know how soon that's going to happen again. But just in general... My phone's always on. And if I'm talking to another customer, leave me a message. Guaranteed, I'll call you right back. I think so that pretty much goes for everybody at the company. Pretty much, if pretty much. If we uh, don't know the answer, we know somebody who does. So we're not scared to say, hey, I don't know, uh, but let me find that out for you. So we're actually gonna move over to, maybe, clear path. We're going to talk about how to maneuver in tight spaces. And this is a big old machine, so how am I going to maneuver this in tight spaces? Let's, let's, let's talk about it. Just give me a minute to get to where we're going. So a great complaint I hear is, Dave, my machine's big and heavy and I keep destroying um, the transition in the doorways because this is what happens. You have all the weight of the machine on your drive wheels and a swivel caster. And you guys have to just picture this as a doorway. I didn't really need to put the door up. But this is what guys do. They show up on the job and they want to take their machine inside and this is what they do. That is exactly what happens. They destroy it. So how can we defeat that? I'm going to show you guys. Can we pull those off? Do I don't know what happened to my other one. Tommy, you want to show us how this works? I will do my best. So, so uh, this is how you defeat this. Tom's going to lower the machine onto the swivel point. He's going to drive over the transition piece. Now he's going to put his transport wheels back down, which removes the swivel wheel off the ground, and he's going to drive over. This is a much softer swivel point. Look, it's aluminum, and it didn't even destroy it. This is wood, and it destroyed it. 
So that's, that's real simple, that's it. That's how you do that. Now we're gonna move back over this way. I'm going to bring an aid. While we're talking about how to maneuver in tight spaces, this is a 27 inch swivel head attachment for the ride on machines. And I have a 27 inch blade. Um, and I've actually offset it. And what that does is in grocery stores or lots of places you have the kick where your feet come up underneath the the counter or the racks. Even right against a wall. Or right against the wall in a narrow hallway to prevent from having to go angle, 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 angle. I've offset this so I can run straight down the hallway and remove right to the wall with one pass. This doesn't come with a machine. It's actually something that you have to order, but it's a great um, accessory to add on later when you come across that. Um, it's a fantastic way to edge, and especially in the real tight areas where if it's a somewhat narrow hallway and you're trying to go angle, 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 it's very difficult to remove um, the VCT or the tile. This actually, I have a thicker blade on here. It's a .188. I can take up the ceramic tile that's left on the edge with this because it's such a thick blade. Um, it's not what I use to take up the majority of it, but certainly I can edge what's left with this. So... Is that the only thing that the 27-inch uh, swivel head can do? Um, no, actually, that's a great question, Tom. Uh, here, I'm just going to take this off the trash can so it doesn't fall over. One of my favorite things about that 27-inch swivel head attachment is I love turning my ride-on scrapers into bulldozers. This is in the catalog, it is called a tile box. This is actually has a lip on the back of it that fits into that 27 inch blade holder. And it makes cleanup on the job so much faster because once I bolt this onto that swivel head attachment, I can push ceramic tile, VCT, wood floor, carpet. I could push it all into one pile where guys can pick it up and move it out of the way. If your tile spread out all over the floor, guys are trying to push it with shovels, it really slows down the cleanup process. So having this 27 inch um, tile box is a great way to um, clean up your wood floors, your ceramic tile, your VCT, whatever's left on the floor. And I think something important in the past that we've come across, guys uh, ask if they can actually remove the tile with the tile box. Uh, it's not really what it's designed for. It looks like it has a little bit of a blade on the front, but uh, it's definitely not meant for removal. It's just meant for cleanup. Correct. All right, so that concludes our first um, segment. Thanks for joining us on uh, how to remove wood floors. Um, keep in mind, you guys, uh, Nationals Ionizers, if you don't know what they are, call and let us talk to you a little bit about them. Um, they pull dust and contaminants out of the air and they provide a clean, safe, breathable air for your employees and your customers for job sites or office buildings. We have special closeout pricing on the first generation ionizers and there's only a few left, so give us a call. We'll get you guys set up with those right away. Our next session is gonna be carpet in what, an hour? Is that right? An hour from now, yep. 11 a.m. to 12. So you guys tune in for that. We're gonna talk all about how to take up carpet and how to rescrape glue again. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Dave.